Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel CodeLogic. So today we are going to see how to develop a multi-user login system using Spring Boot. In our, our previous video, we have developed a front-end using Angular. So if you have not watched that video, please press the bell icon. Uh, you will get the notification there. Please watch that video first because it is a successor of that video. So uh, in this video, we are going to develop some REST endpoints and we are going to fetch that endpoints from the Angular yeah so without wasting any time let's get started we are going to uh, start our spring.io website so here uh, we will generate our spring project so i'll add a group id as a code logic now uh, i'll add artifact id as a multi-user auth Okay, the yeah description is there. Okay, now we'll add dependency. First, TV search for web dependency. Then uh, after that, we'll search for JP Spring Data JP. Then uh, Dev Tools. Lastly. Lambok. Okay, there is another one. Uh, MySQL RAM. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, that's it. We generate our project and we'll open it in IntelliJ. Okay. You can see this is our multi-user auth project. We are opening it in uh, IntelliJ IDEA. Okay. Our project structure is uh, ready here. Uh, inside the SRC folder, main Java. You can see our main method is there main class now uh, firstly we will create some packages here first package will be model then uh, after that we will create another package controller and uh, uh, third one service and the we'll create last one which is a repository okay now we'll create a java class first we'll create a pojo class of user okay we'll annotate it, it with the entity Now create here uh, ID. You are using a username as an ID. Then uh, we'll create uh, different variables like uh, name. password role and uh, we'll create another one which is a token okay uh, we'll add lambok uh, dependencies which is a uh, data annotation no argument constructor and all argument constructor these uh, annotations are used to create getter setter methods. Okay, lastly, uh, we'll add another annotation which is a column uh, and length should be 100 for the username because we are using a username as an ID. Now uh, we'll create a interface inside our repository package. This user repository interface will extend uh, JP repository, which will contain uh, two parameters. First one is a user, and uh, which is our Pojo class, and second one is the uh, ID of that 
class so uh, primary key is there a uh, string okay yeah. now we go inside a controller we'll create auth controller file now uh, inside service class we are going to create a service auth service will annotate it with the service annotation also we are at where the user repository now inside a controller we'll add a rest controller annotation also a request mapping Yeah. We'll uh, add wire service class here. now we'll create our first method which is our register which is of type post mapping okay which is a public method which will return a string register and we pass a request body as a user user object inside here we'll declare one uh, string variable result and we'll call the method on auth service class and we pass the user as a variable to that register method We press alt enter and uh, it will create a method there also we are returning the result value okay our method is created here firstly uh, we'll check uh, if the user is already exist check if user already exists So, if user is uh, already exist, check user exist method. We are writing it. We are passing user as a variable there, and uh, if the value is exactly equal to true, then uh, we are returning the message saying that uh, user registrations fail. Error while registering the user. Okay, now we'll create that method so here so uh, we are declaring one uh, users object user class object and calling the method on the user repository dot find by id so uh, it is a inbuilt method we are passing here user dot get username because uh, username is our id right so on that method if the it is we are not found that username then we are just declaring a new user there so if existing user is exactly equal to null okay so uh, in a previous line uh, instead of new user will uh, pass null value okay so if user is null then uh, will return a value true that means uh, sorry false that means no user is found otherwise we'll return true
okay now user dot set token here we are uh, generating a token Okay. Here now uh, we are declaring some final variables. Secure random. So uh, it is a class which is used to uh, declare uh, random variables. So also uh, we need the base 64 encoder. Get URL encoder. Now we are using that above variables here. Firstly, we'll create a byte array of 24 bytes. We name it as a token. Now on the secure random method, uh, we'll call the next bytes method and we'll pass the token. So it will uh, generate the next 24 values there inside our token array and we are now returning a uh, base encoder dot encode to string value and we are passing the token as a parameter so uh, it is a returning a uh, returning us a token okay now uh, we are saving that uh, value inside our user repository okay uh, ultimately user repository will call uh, save the value into database and now we are returning the message user registration is successful okay now we'll go inside our controller and we'll write method for login uh, it is also post mapping we'll uh, annotate it with the uh, has at the rate post mapping and slash login also we are passing the value request body as a user here we declare uh, one variable token and calling a method on auth service class And returning the value of token so if user is successfully logged in then uh, we are sending the token means the data is present then we are sending the token otherwise we are sending a empty string there so in this method we'll declare a user variable and we call the uh, object find by ID and we pass the user dot user ID get username or else we pass null so if existing user is exactly equal to null then we are returning empty string which indicates that user is not present otherwise we are uh, we are sending the data of that token Now uh, inside our resource directory, we'll open the application.properties file and we'll add some code here. Okay, so this is the uh, database related code. So you can see first is a data source URL which is on port 3306. Uh, Spring Boot is a database name. Okay, these are the some credentials, username and password of that database. 
and the hibernate ddl auto is update that means it will update the queries there okay now we will go inside our main and we will uh, run our project so uh, our application is running here so you can see uh, our tomcat has started on port 8080 that means our application is running on port 8080 so that's it for the video guys so in the next video we'll see how we can communicate with from the angular to our backend that is a spring boot application which we have developed now so thank you for watching the video guys if you like the video please like share and subscribe and uh, if you have any doubts then feel free to comment below we'll definitely try to resolve your doubts so keep watching the video till then bye bye